time too, Princess Frogface. Some people actually bother to get washed in the morning, you know. And you don't have to be first in every time. Disgusting! Your hair's all over the basin! No danger of that with you. You never wash it. Can we have a ceasefire, you two? No. It's bad enough down here. We don't need your help. Well, we'll give it to Hump, then, shall we? There you are, Hump. <laughs> yeah, Does respond to care. Spun gold. What are you doing with that thing? Mind my hair. Pooh, what's that, Paul? You're wearing perfume. I am not. It's only color. What's that? Water. I wonder it smells so bad. Ow! You asked for that. Now, enough. Both of you. They broke out again. There's an egg there. What, the bullets? Egg smashed and three of them gone. Clean away. Not a sniff. Oh, Charlie. I can't make a tale of it. That's the third time in two months. Bess, you're in a dream again. Ellie will be here in two minutes. You know what she's like. You're not wearing those, are you? Oh, what's wrong with them? They have them on the crochet. Oh, I think she looks lovely. Oh, no, oh, oh, God. What are you all dressed up for, anyway? The head is on the clothes show, Lardy. And James Bond's in the Boy Scouts, I suppose. My scout coat teaches you a lot more useful things than traipsing up and down to cocktail parties in London. Oh, I forgot the family party. Bright lights, here we come. When are you going to be able to rejoin us in the trenches, eh, madam? Oh, it'll be a nice day out for her, Charlie. She's only going for the day. Anyway, it'll be company for Ellie on her own there in that little house. It's very kind of Ellie to take her. Oh, he's worth again. Oh, yeah. I would do it. It was going to stop for petrol in the village. Oh, dear. Oh. Hello, Ellie! Oh, my God, no. Charlie, you what are we going to do about these oh, bullocks? Very nice. You got enough to read on the journey, have you? I'll just pop in and see how they all are. Well, oh, you do look nice, Pat. Go and get your coat, love. You'll need a coat. It's chilly out. You are invited to attend a grand reunion of our family to be held at the Tower Hotel, London. Have your name written upon you so we may know one another. Should we rip? Not the rip. Who's it from? Well, that's the mystery. It isn't signed. What's a reunion? It's not a party. I don't really like parties. Well, this is different. Lots of new uncles and aunts. I'd be so pleased to meet you. Anyway, I don't expect it to go on too long. We might have time to pop in next door to the Tower of London, where all the kings and queens used to have their heads cut off. Queen Elizabeth of Brest, she was a terror. Your namesake, Bess. Good Queen Bess. We are most royally pleased to meet you, our loyal servant, Bess. And we have great pleasure in dubbing you. This day, the Lady Elizabeth Throckmorton of Marshfield Farm. We are further delighted to learn that you have left behind your snivelling big brother, Will, in Scout Camp. Me too, Your Majesty. What? Oh, um, nothing. So, you will have to excuse me welcoming you to our family reunion. I 
in the absence of our host, but uh, he's asked me to Please. do the honors. He prefers to remain anonymous. He's a bit of a mystery man. But he is generous. I've always wanted to call him. There's plenty of food and drink, and you've all got name tags, so do introduce yourselves and have a good time. I must say, it's all a bit peculiar. No host and an anonymous MC to welcome us. What's an MC? MC? Master of Ceremonies, of course. Emily? Is it you? Winnie? Winnie Clitheroe? <laughs> oh, it must be 30 years. You're a 40. <laughs> Can't believe it. The last time I saw you, you'd broken your leg. <laughs> and you signed Frank Sinatra all over my plaster. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Is this wine or juice? Juice, dear. Thanks. Taking it and never breaking it. Not even shaking it. It's grooving to know it's moving it. Because I ain't faking it. MC Hammer, that's Throckmorton here reporting for Radio Devonmore. You see, it was Johnny Ray and Cry all the way for me then. When your sweetheart sends a letter of goodbye. You wouldn't believe it to look at me now, would you? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder where Bess has got to. Bess? My niece, yes, I brought her. Oh, it is good to see you, Winnie. Just one last question, MC. Can I ask you who you'll be dedicating your latest hit single to? Why? I can think of no one better than you, Miss Thornton. Or may I call you Bess? May I join you? Ah, well, thank you. So, you're Bess Throckmorton. I've been searching for you everywhere. Me? Incredible. My wife, too, was called Bess Throckmorton. Ah, my poor, sweet Bess. You're a relative? Aye, you might say so. Ye gods, if Walter Raleigh could be here now. Oh, it is hard to believe it, perhaps, but everyone in this room has the blood of Walter Raleigh coursing through his veins. Walter Raleigh? You've heard of him, I trust. Oh, I think so. Isn't he the one that laid his cloak across the puddle to the queen? Oh, that all you know of him? Relegated by history to a muddy puddle. Know you not that Walter Raleigh is an ancestor of yours? Look, over there, 13 long, cold years he spent in there, locked away in the bloody tower. I tell you, if ever a man served his country well, it was Walter Raleigh, and how did they repay him? Cruel. Cruel. You should go there. You should see it for yourself. You must go. You must. I'll try. Excellent. Now, child, you can do me some small service. I long for something to drink. I drink only red wine. driving. I better take it easy. Give it to Winnie. As long as you can carry me to the tube. <laughs> and is this the niece you were telling me about? Yes, Bessie, dear. This is your auntie Winnie, my cousin and my best friend when I was your age. She's a good girl, but she does wonder. Hello, Bessie. I expect all this is a bit boring for you. 
No, it's all right, thanks. <laughs> Maybe Ellie will take you across the way afterwards to see the crown jewels oh, in the tower. I like that, wouldn't you? Mm. I've seen them again myself. Mm. I've seen them for years. Mm. Do you like jewels? What a lovely bracelet. There's the orb, the one that she carried at the coronation. 1953, that was a good year. That was a lovely year, Winnie. The coronation. The four-minute mile. The four-minute mile. Conquering of Everest. Conquering of Everest. I thought this is going to be your year, too, Ellen Louise Throckmorton. The world is your oyster. I was 15, but it was not to be. Oh, it really is, Ellie. Life isn't always what you imagine it's going to be. Move along, please. I shan't ask you again. This line must keep moving. You two young lady, you can't take it with you. Come along. Now keep moving, please. Not that way, sir. This way, please. Lady Jane Grey, she was another one. She was only 16 when she laid her lovely young neck on that block. Where's think of it, it doesn't bear thinking about. And what had she done, Winnie? Nothing. She nothing did nothing. to deserve it. Nothing. The blood, the mess, imagine. And in public. But that was the way it was in those days. She must have been. And this is where it was, the block. Plunk right out in the open for everyone to see. Like having a bath in public and leaving your wet towels all over the floor. <laughs> You're terrible. You'd have been in there with a squeegee, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh, but they must have been brave, especially the young girls. I can face what has to be with my eyes open. I am innocent. You will regret it. You will be sorry afterwards, a lot of you. Pass me my lace handkerchief. The Lady Winnie can have my best bracelet. So you came. I hoped you might. Your servant, cousin. May I present myself? I am. I was. Sir Walter Raleigh. Come along. Here we are then, the bloody tower. So cold, because it was from here, in the cold light of dawn, that many an unfortunate prisoner was taken down to the block. There was Lady Jane Grey, the Earl of Essex, and of course, the great Sir Walter Raleigh himself. Poet, he wrote love poems to the Queen. Scientist, he made his own medicines down in a shed under the ramparts there. And explorer, he sent the first settlers to America, he grew the first potatoes, he smoked the first tobacco. Over 13 years he was in here before they cut his head off. And every evening, he walked up and down the ramparts, puffing his pipe. And you know, son, there's some who say he still does. <sighs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, come this way, if you please, and we'll take a look at Raleigh's walk. I can smell 
smell cigarette smoke. Filthy habit. I never smoked, Winnie dear, never. I can't understand why they allowed him to bring tobacco into the country in the first place. No wonder they cut off his head. <laughs> I don't understand. How can I see you when they can't? You can only see me because I wish you to. I do not wish them to see me, so they cannot. But what about me? They cannot see you because I wish them not to. Cut off your head. They did. Then how come you've got it back again? I cannot tell you, cousin, for I know only how things are, not how they came to be so. And my head, they were welcome to. I'd worn it long enough. Then they called me traitor and took my reputation. I am a fortune, too, and for that I shall never forgive them. Never! I would not hurt you, cousin, not for the world, I promise you. Walter Raleigh is your friend, I, and your humble servant, too. Better be going, Aunt Ellie. Mm. She'll be looking for me. We've got to go back to Devon tonight. Devon? Devon, you say? I was a boy there. I tell you, there is no place more beautiful, not in the wide world. This. I on 400 years alive and dead have I spent in this wretched place. These damp prison walls are my entire world. I know no other. They stifle my spirits and sap my hope. I yearn to be gone from you. I would fish once more in the silver streams and ride out on the hills with wind on my face. Help me, best. You're my only hope. My only lifeline to the living world. Me? But I'm only ten. Are you sure you've got the right person? You are the only person, Bess. You are Bess Throckmorton, the namesake, the direct descendant of my wife four centuries ago. Who better to help me escape than you? A kinswoman, a ghost, may not enter that world without invitation, without warmth, kindness. And when he loses that friendship, he must go back, back to the prison of that other world. Without you, Bess, I'm doomed to stay here for all eternity. Take me with you, I pray. Beg you. I can't. Something might frighten Gran. Something wrong with her heart. In any way, what if Mum and Dan see you by accident? They shall not, cousin. I swear it, not unless you wish it. I shall show myself to no one but you. Take me with you. Bess? Bessie? What on earth are you doing here? I thought I'd lost you. Are you all right? Of course I am. Well, come along then. We've got to be going. How did you manage to do that? Clumsy? People work here, you know. Got to keep the place tidy, all those beef eaters. Well, if you're thinking of staying the night here, I'm not. Oh, look at me, forgetting my bag. I'm getting as dozy as you. Where did I put it? All right, then. What? Oh, there it is. Silly me. I get my head next. Come on, then. 
There's a 619 and an 819. But if we get the 619, I think we have to change anyway. So it's probably as broad as it is long. Filthy, dirty, full of office work. Did you meet anyone nice? Any? Who's that? Friend of Aunt Ellie's. Was Ellie all right? Anyone else? Not really. What did you see in the tower? Crown jewels? All that torture stuff. Horrid, all that. The block and everything. The poor things. What about the bloody tower? Didn't you go up there? I can't... I can't remember. Too much for one day. I'll hear all about it in the morning. Mum! There was someone else. Yes? No, it's nothing. Doesn't matter. Well, in the morning. Good night, darling. Oh, shut up, Hans. Are you there? I'm here. You've got to promise not to do that to anyone except me. I promise. Where are you going to sleep? Oh, ghosts are like owls. We do not sleep much at night, nor at any time come to that. I bid you good night, sweet cousin. And may God bless you always for your kindness to me. I shall not forget it, I promise you.
There's something up with that dog. He was whining all night. Brett's coming over later. He can take a look. Excuse me, Dolly Daydream. That's more than hump, Yolin. There was all sorts of yells and bumps. Well, that was me, Gran, in the cellar. All left his bleepers on again. Oh, I thought I was dreaming. No, Gran. Deirdre's the dreaming for this family. One's enough. I'm off to count some flesh and blood cows. Bess, you look as if you've seen a ghost. It's all right. It's not so bad. <laughs> hey, madam, what about this mess? Hens! you, cousin. Um, a code, a signal, perhaps. No. <coughs> I have it. I have it! Should you ever want to know if I'm close by, you have but to cough. One cough. And you shall know. Cough, then? <coughs> I'll cough twice, cousin, and I shall appear again. <coughs> How's that? One cough to see where you are, and two to make you appear. Excellent. But, pretty cuz, call me not up on a whim, for it, it, it tires an old ghost to make himself appear too often or for too long. Told her. She lives for that horse. <sighs> Come on, Hans. Time for your drops. Are you riding Sally tomorrow? fencing stakes. I thought we paid it last month. We couldn't. Well, we can't pay it this month either. It's like my birthplace, Bess. <laughs> Would I'd stayed there. I should have kept my happiness. Yeah, in my head too. Did you ever hear tell, Bess, of a mighty river in South America they call the Orinoco? I discovered it. No, some say otherwise. From a hill, some 20 miles off, we first beheld it. 10, 12 waterfalls, one atop another. Each is High as a church. The water fell with such fury, Bess. At first, we took it as smoke from the fires of some great city. But there was no city there. Nor no men, neither. Only birds 
singing on every tree towards evening, perching on the river's edge. Think not, Cass. Who are they, anyway? Borabel brothers. Huh? Horrible Borabels, we call them. They've a license to shoot on the next door farm. They shoot anything. Ducks, otters, even the heron ones. Dad and Will saw them. Oh, my brother Will. He's at scout camp. Dad threw their gun in the river. They hate us. In order to go faster, you have to press the cut clutch down, which is this, with your foot, oh. and change the gear. And you can only change the gear if you've got your foot on the clutch. Blessed cattle disappearing under our noses. Who's doing anything about that? Not the boys in blue, you can bet. I know. Maybe Gran could go and live with Ellie for a bit. It'd be one less mouth to feed. No, she belongs here. Break her heart to leave the kids. And Sally. Besides, to put Ellie into a right old tangle, she'd be falling around with a dustpan and brush. <laughs> Charlie. No, but I'm a proper old misery, aren't I? You've a right to be worried, love. Melissa. Good, but not yet perfect. Let's find some Melissa. That will serve the purpose.
Let's have a good time. It's all right. Dad says you've been fishing. Not with my rod, I hope. Cast nut. Catch anything? Start nut. Have you been smoking or something? No. What's up with them? About money, I think. It's always about money. Something's been going on. It hasn't. Everyone's different. Even Hunt. And there's another thing. You've been down in my chemistry lab, haven't you? I have not. I never go down this cellar. Spiders down there. Well, someone has. I know they have. Supper! Coming? In a minute. I confess, but may not agree with my cousin. I, I am a, I was, a scientist, a searcher after knowledge. When I lived among men, I had once, with my physic, all but cured the king's son of a typhoid. Well, who knows but that my medicines may be of use again. But your pardon, Bess. It's not my pardon you should be worrying about. Hmm? It's Will's. Oh. I'm not in trouble with him as it is. Mm. He's suspicious already. And you'll have to stop smoking, too. Both of you. What's all the shouting about? Look what she's done! I never touched your silly rod. I found this on the table this morning when I come down for my early morning tea. Well, don't look at me. I mean, that must be what, five or six pounds at least. Right, right, it was me. But I didn't mean to get it in a tangle. Couldn't help it. Well, it's a bit big. You're always on about making ends meet. Thought it would be a nice surprise. I was only trying to help. Oh, my dear. Oh. You caught this all on your own? It's all very well, Walter, having a secret friend. But I have to keep covering up for you. 
I was ever the careless friend, Bess. But a loving one. You shall see. Oh, was he not the handsomest fish you ever saw? And there were a dozen more like him. I'd have had them too. But for a strange circumstance, and I could get no forager in my business. At least Will enjoyed the fish. Dad, too. Tell me, yes. Has your father many head of cattle? A good many, but not enough. I keep losing them. It's a mystery. They just disappear in the night. Hmm. Dad says it's rustlers, like in the cowboy films. I think it's time for the sheriff to take a hand, Bess. We don't have a sheriff. Walter, what are you talking about? Your stirrup leathers are too short for me. Do you have longer? Well, I think so. Good. Who saw her last? Well, she was here. I fed her an hour ago, less. But did you shut the gate? Oh, of course I did. Well, I, I think so. I, I'm not sure. Doctor's on his way. Can Sally have gone? Granny will never forgive herself. First the bullocks, now the horse. I'll call the sergeant at the station. Tell him to keep an eye on for her. Get out! Get out! Get out! 
cousin. Are you not pleased to see us? Pleased. Pleased. Do you know what you've done? You've nearly killed my grand. That's what you've done. You don't think, do you? You don't care. They were right to cut off your head, they were. You can go back to your bloody tower and rot for all I care. She's back, Grand! Sally's back! Sally's here! She's found! She's come home by herself. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Gran, can you hear me? Sally's come back. She's no better. She still won't take her pills. A horse can't just go off like that and come back as if it's been on holiday or something. It doesn't make any sense. You should shoot her. If Grand dies, it's all Sally's fault. It's not her fault, it's not. It's... It's not anyone's fault. Go on, off to bed. The both of you. to administer the elixir in this bottle to your grandmother. Delay not, for I fear she is in dire need of it. Four drops of water will suffice. Do it now, dear Bess, and pray that his foolish experiment may at long last prove remedy enough to forgive your most humble and affectionate cousin, W.R. I wish I'd never... 